We had a lot of questions on the last stream about decorators. Should another video about decorators. Uh, this one was, how do I write a decorator using a class instead of functions? Um, and almost all of the examples that I've shown so far only use uh, functions to implement decorators. So this one will show you how to make one with a class. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so for today, uh, we're gonna implement a, oh, what should we implement? I guess we'll implement a caching decorator. That seems fine. Um, so let's call it just class cached, and I am not going to, it's not gonna be any fancy decorator. Um, it's just going to infinitely cache all the data that it's that, that's called in this. Um, so let's call it def cached, and maybe we'll make a compute function which takes x and returns, uh, x is an int and returns an int. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's the uh, squared function. Sure, <laughs> something like that. Uh, and let's also print as a side effect here. Uh, and show what's being called with. Okay, so to implement this decorator as a class, um, so if we were to do this, you know, with a um, with a function, we would do something like def cached, and this would take in a function. And we would make, you know, cached deck, which takes in star args and return cached deck. And maybe this has, you know, cached data. If args in cached data, return cached data args. Actually, we'd probably do it like this. Return or try return cached data args, except uh, key error. Uh, cached data args equals ret equals func star args return ret. So we would probably do it like this if it were a function decorator. Um, try to initialize this and put uh, import func tools and we would put func tools dot wraps Funk. Anyway, let's <laughs> let's at least get the function version working first, and then we'll do the class-based version. So if we do this, Python 3-i t.py, and we call compute with two, you'll see that we printed this because we called it. Um, if we call it again, it doesn't do this side effect again, so we've cached its value. Uh, but of course, if we call it with something else, we'll get you know a new return value and a new side effect. So this is how you do with the function. And just to make sure that you know our wraps worked properly, compute.name went through. Uh, we didn't actually do a doc string, but you'll see the annotations come through as well. And is it signature? Text signature? I don't remember how to get signature. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, you'll, you'll be able to get through um, your attributes there. So now let's implement the same thing, but as a class. Um, a class is going to be called similar to this function first in initialization and then with double under call. So let's make a class called cached. And in double under init, we're gonna receive the function. So this is different than uh, here where we're receiving the function by being called. And init is going to return an instance of this. So we need to do, we need to store self.func here. Uh, and we'll also store any of our, you know, data attributes here. So self.cache data as a dictionary. And then we'll implement double under call. And this is similar to this part here where we have a special decorator. Um, and for double under call, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and access our cache data similar to what we did here. So we're gonna try return cached data args, except key error, uh, cached data, oops, this should be self dot, self dot cached data args equals ret equals func star args, return ret. And this is mostly the same as before. So if we run this now and we do compute, you know, two, uh, <laughs> we forgot to do self.func. <laughs> Oops. All right, if we do compute two, you'll see that it prints the side effect. We get our return value and it caches it. Uh, one thing that's problematic about the way I've implemented this though is if we look at the name of compute, um, or I guess, <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. If we look at the name of compute, it actually has the wrong name here uh, because, I mean, it has no name, in fact. 
um, because this class this class instance didn't forward along the attributes of this here. So we actually need to use a special function. We can't use functools.wraps directly here uh, because we don't have you know we don't have anything to decorate. But functools.wraps proxies to this function called functools.update wrapper, uh, which takes the wrapper and the wrapped thing and um, you know does the side effects of functools.wraps. And so we can do that in our double inner init here. Uh, we can do functools.update. What's it called? Update wrapper. And the first argument is the wrapper. So the wrapper is self, and the wrapped object is fun. And so if we do that now, and we look at compute.name, uh, you'll see that you know it it looks it looks more like the compute class. Of course, you can or the the compute function. Of course, it's not quite perfect. Uh, you can still kind of see some of the leaking behavior because it's a uh, you know it's an instance of class. Uh, you could take this one further and you know do def wrapper of self and return wrapper of self dot func, um, and so that would give you. A thing that looks more like the original class, of course, we're we're we're, <laughs> we're kind of cheating a bit by setting wrapper here, um, but now you know this this looks more like a the actual original function here, even though it has been replaced with a class. Um, and this is very similar to how functools.lru cache works. Now, if you have to go one level further and make a decorator factory, um, where you know before we would say like you know maybe we have a max size equals two here, for instance. Uh, and then we would have to make, you know, uh, you know, max size in here and then cached decorator with a func. Uh, and then we would have to, you know, indent all of this and return cached decorator. So this is kind of decorator. This is kind of a decorator factory pra uh, pattern. You can do the same thing with classes. Uh, however, it gets a little bit gnarly, so I would actually recommend, you know, doing a level of functions instead of doing a nested class. Because uh, with a with a nested class decorator factory, <laughs> you have to override call twice to have two different signatures. One is the case where it's called with just a single function, and then the other is when it's called as it's the, you know, the decorator itself. Um, so what I would recommend is, you know, do this. And, uh, and then have cached, uh, cached decorator, decorator, uh, which takes func and then just does, you know, return cached, uh, it's cached class, return cached class of func and max size. I find that this is the easiest way to maintain this. Yes, decorator. And we don't have to do anything special with wraps because uh, this class actually handles that for us. So, yeah. That would be how I would approach this. <laughs> of course, um, you know, you could do with a class. It's just way more complicated for that. Um, but anyway, hopefully this is helpful. Uh, if you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.